The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And we do that every Tuesday by sharing the stories and advice of those rocking it on the other side. So this week we learn from Nicole Souza. Nicole is the chief marketing officer at Saatchi and Saatchi. Saatchi and Saatchi is a historically famous creative advertising agency. So she's got a passion and drive for building brands and growing organizations. And that's what she's doing there. She's leading the charge on repositioning and marketing the agency, bringing in new leads and shaking things up with a fresh approach to their marketing, PR, and business development. Throughout Nicole's career, she's been a master at growing and leading teams and has an impressive track record of winning new business for global companies like ExxonMobil, Frito-Lay, LG, Mars, Nestle, PepsiCo, Starbucks, and Wells Fargo, just to name a few. Before joining Saatchi and Saatchi, Nicole held senior marketing roles at other big names like Deutsche New York, The Integer Group, Universal McCann, and TBWA. So in this episode, we dive into all things new business. You'll learn about Saatchi and Saatchi's vision for growth, how they operate, the general new business stages, and what the team consists of, and of course, what she is looking for in talent, and how we can all better our break-in chances, and how we can all better thrive in our current roles. So if you listen to this entire episode and say to yourself, hey, I think I would actually love to break into new business, you should follow us on Instagram at Breaking and Entering Pod, and you should follow us on LinkedIn, Breaking and Entering Pod. Then message me. My name is Gino Schellenberger. And if you're super passionate, I'll work my very hardest to get you in touch with Nicole directly. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast, and as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. All right. Nicole Souza, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. How are you doing today? I am great. Thank you for having me. Amazing, amazing. Are you ready to talk advertising? I can't wait. Let's do it. How often do you talk advertising? Every day, multiple hours a day. Yes, me too. Do you ever get tired of it? I don't. I mean, I do get tired. Yes, but um... But separating it, it's not because of it. Just in (laughs) general, humans get tired. No, I really enjoy this industry and... um... I really love what I do. So no, I don't get tired of talking about it. Not yet. Good, because we will dive into it now. And you obviously really like it because you're doing really well at it. You're the chief marketing (laughs) officer at Saatchi and Saatchi. We're just talking offline. Saatchi and Saatchi is an all-time, one of my all-time favorite agencies. So we're here to talk about you. What does a chief marketing officer do at an agency? Uh, Your story, your advice for our listeners out there, the whole thing. So, so many things to dive into. Let's start off. (laughs) <laughs> Let's start off with um, a little bit about yourself. It doesn't even have to be advertising related. Like, where are you at? Yeah. What do you like to do? Just general stuff. Well, I'm based in New York. I am from the Midwest and I've lived sort of all over the U.S. Um, what do I like to do? I like to spend time with my family. I like to run. I love to travel. Um, you know, a slew of other things. Where in the Midwest are you from? I'm from Iowa. I'm from Waterloo, Iowa. Okay, interesting. And you ended up going to Boston University. Well, is that correct? I did. I got my graduate degree at BU. Oh, but you went to Drake. That's Iowa. Yeah, I went to Drake in Des Moines. Mm -hmm. Um, Great comms program. Great school. Have to shout out to my alma mater because it was a wonderful education. Oh, nice. I know some people that ended up playing football there for my school. So definitely on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. But yes, I left the Midwest. Um, Haven't been back since (laughs) to live. But um, no miss it. I I mean, there are certain aspects, of course, I miss. Mm. um, And it was certainly a great place to grow up. But for my aspirations professionally, and I think what's best for my family, we're better Mm -hmm. than New York. Interesting. Love it. Okay. So now let's talk about, now we know a little bit about you, like the run. That's, you know, that's a little, that's not for me, but that's awesome that you love that. <laughs> um, uh, tell us about your role as a chief marketing officer at Saatchi and Saatchi. What does that mean? How do we end up doing that? 
It's interesting, right? Like I think somewhere along the way in the industry, someone realized that there was a need to actually market your own agency brand as opposed to just marketing client brands. Um, so as a chief marketer in, um, as a chief marketing officer in Saatchi in the U.S., my remit is essentially to grow our Saatchi brand amidst all of the other agencies in the U.S. and targeting the clients that we want to work with and the places we want to be in the, in the, um, in the market and in the industry. And it's essentially growing the, the client base that we have. So going out and getting new business everything that sort of falls within that realm. You know, I was just on another podcast talking about how agencies have a tough time marketing themselves. We do a mm -hmm. great job marketing our brands, whoever yep. they might be. If you want to give a shout out to some of those brands, feel free um, that you do. Um, but how do you approach it? How do you grow the the perception? And how do you, do you have a full team that does creative work for the brand? Or do you just rely on the advertisements and the campaigns that you create for your clients, they're really great and show, show it to the world. Like what's, what's your approach? So two things I think you've just asked. One is about how you grow your brand and market. And the other is about the operations behind it. Sure. So yeah. in, in growing your brand in the market, you have to do exactly what you would do from, for a client. You have to identify what it is authentically about Saatchi that matters to your target, which is, is uh, prospective clients. And what can be ownable in the space that we all know is so saturated with so many agencies. And then you have to choose who within your team can really deliver that message in a compelling way, either one-on-one -on -one to clients or via PR and uh, brand awareness opportunities such as this or, you know, other circuits. Um, and really like get yourself out there so that people consider you when they're reviewing their business. Uh, from an operations standpoint, yes, we do have a centralized team. We have dedicated resources that that help us when we're pitching or mm. preparing for any sort of marketing and, and awareness, awareness efforts. Gotcha. So this is something that's really exciting for our listeners because um, you have a team and there are, would this be called new business at Saatchi and Saatchi, like a new business team, marketing team? What, what yeah, do you we, refer to? We call it growth and marketing. It's growth and marketing. Team. Team. Yep. Growth and marketing team. So I think, and especially in this podcast, I neglect this area a lot. We talk to, you know, your accounts, we talk to uh, copywriters, art directors, production strategists, the, the, the fundamental roles that are kind of more well known in this industry. Yeah. But the new business, the growth and marketing, the PR and comms, all in that bucket, I do neglect. So it's great to know that. Do you hire? Like, is it, is it impossible? to break into advertising at this first level, uh, entry level role in this marketing bucket? Is, is there roles for that? Well, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. And there is a way to, um, yeah, to come into the industry via the growth and marketing channel. I mean, we have, I sort of look at, well, our team anyways, broken into sort of the, the marketing PR or brand awareness side. And then there's the business development sort of pitching side of the team. Yep. And both sides have opportunities for um, entry-level sort of support roles, if you will, from internship to something like an AAE or an AE, um, yeah. where you get in and learn the track. I will say, though, mm -hmm. it does help to have some previous agency experience. Yep. You know, like if you can do it in that new, and I have hired people that have come in right out of school and done very well. At some point, though, you do need to know what it's like to run an account or work on an account or yeah. like have some sort of really ingrained um, firsthand ex experience in the business. OK, that's absolutely fair. Um, and then also, though, so then like maybe one or two years, you know, you could probably at earlier levels, you could probably yeah. get into it. So once again, that's something to think about in a way, at least from what I've experienced and what I've heard on this podcast, like you can raise your hand for new business opportunities at, at most agencies. They'll usually be like, I don't know how you operate. So you tell me, but like sometimes like they'll, they'll handpick people. Like if you're working, if you're working on a new pitch for a really sporty company, they'll find mm -hmm. out who's really sporty or interested or play that in college and they'll handpick. But if you raise your hand and they want, they have the time and the resources, like you can probably get, help out on these pitches. Yes, absolutely. I, I've done this at a handful of agencies and 
I can't think of a time when someone's raised their hand where the growth and marketing team has been like, no, we're, we're all set. We <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We always need help. We do have yes. resources, but like everyone's perspective is really been like beneficial to mm-hmm. the pitch or to the opportunity. And we're always in, you know, in need of, I mean, a pitch is a lot of work. So we're always yeah. in need of extra hands. Yeah, absolutely. So raise your hand if you're in an agency already and then and like get to know in the Nicole's of that agency yeah. and go talk to them and 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 raise your hand and, and volunteer. I think also I'm curious and maybe your role or or your team's roles in general day to day what could it look like like project by project or, or what what can come across your plate so people understand. Well, there's certainly a ton of work in the actual like space of um new business reviews. So mm-hmm. in the span of a new business, any given new business review, there might be an RFI, which is just mm-hmm. a written response, which is pretty basic information, which my team would be handling. There could be sort of a more advanced written submission coming, which is an RFP, which let's might talk have- about let's tell people I know what they are. Yeah. But let's tell everybody the full acronym. I know we're used to it. Okay. But- so request requests for information is an Who's RFP. sending it out. Uh, clients send that out or pitch consultants send that to uh, agencies. And they're basically just casting the net wide. They know they want an agency partner, a new agency partner, and they cast the net wide, probably send that out to 15, maybe even 20 uh, agencies to get a general sense of your offering, uh, what makes you different and how you might fit into what they're looking for. Got it. So Pretty it's a writ, it's like, a, a, how, how many pages would you say or slides? I mean, 10. 10. And you want, you're, you want to be on that RFI list or yeah. you want it like that's through networking or the, your agency's, you, your brand, which is really great. So you want to be on that first RFI or figure out a way to get on it through pitch consultants or, or just knowing the. Or people. through marketing and PR. I yeah. mean, the more awareness that we have, yeah. the more, like, oh. the more touch points we hit in the market, yeah. the more likely we are to get. Uh, and so the, and and then the RFP is a little bit more detailed. It is. So the request for proposal, which also comes from the client, which is typically or the consultant, which is typically a narrowed down subset of the initial, you know, wide cast sort of group of agencies. Mm-hmm. And that typically has more specifics about the business challenges of the client and quite often has an actual assignment embedded into it. Where you have to tell them how you might approach something strategically, sometimes with spec work, uh, can be a slew of different things. But it's a more in-depth proposal, and that can oftentimes run up to 70, 80, 100 pages. Gotcha. And the, I, I'm not an expert, so and I just think it's interesting. I've saw some coverage and like the process has been kind of, it's a tough process. And the people are trying to change it and like yep. there's different approaches to it. What's your take overall on the, like the RFP process? Do you, do you like, I think, is it efficient right now? Like, how do you guys improve it? Like, what's your take on it? My take on it is that you have to stay true to who you are as an agency and offering in your people. And at the same time, every submission must be customized to the yep. client that you're pitching. So it, it while we strive to have everything sort of built in an arsenal of material for Saatchi, mm-hmm. cannot just apply it to the ask. You have to take that as your foundation and then really figure out who are the right people with the right skill sets, mm-hmm. what set of our work is going to be relevant that we should share, and then how do you answer whatever sort of um, assignment is there in a way that brings in the best of Saatchi, but answers very specifically what they're asking for love it and then at the end of the day then they get the rfps and then what they pick one or two final maybe who knows from there but like usually what will happen after that usually they choose more like three or four for a final pitch um and then sometimes that can be a a meeting where you present what you teed up in the rfp but you have to sort of take it a bit further Mm -hmm. Other times it can be a net new assignment um, where you have to respond to a client brief, write a creative brief, and then create and campaigns to bring in. 
Interesting. So what type of people do you need to, or what type of skills do you need to succeed in this, in this sector of the business? What are you looking for, uh, your people? Certainly um, people who have kind of a constant energy. There, there is definitely an intangible about uh, individuals that work in growth and marketing where there's this, uh, because nothing's ever the same. So you have to be able to like ramp up constantly. And that takes like a certain energy within someone, I think. Um, someone who is very sort of motivated. There's a lot of autonomy in these roles um, from the most junior level up to my own role. Because as you sort of said, like sometimes we forget like about this discipline within the agencies because it's typically the smallest discipline within every agency. Yep. And, and so we don't have a lot of bench. We just have to like sort of do um, I, I joke, but it's real often, you know, I may be meeting one-on-one -on -one with a, a CMO at a, at a client organization, or I may be running copies for something I need to do, or like, you know, like grabbing waters for people. Like it's, it's, it's a very, uh, different, different role, I would say, um, within the agency, but, and uh, somebody who also can, can, um, just roll with things. I would say in this discipline, often things are unexpected and and we, you have, might have to change something that you worked on very hard for many days or, you know, and you just have to roll with it. You have to be okay with that and um, know that there's like a greater purpose moving forward and, and yeah. be fine with it. No, it's, def it's definitely an, inter an interesting position and, and role within the agency. And a lot of creatives, if, like. I feel like they enjoy working on pitches or they don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, some people enjoy it because you get to get out of your day to day. You, you're assigned a client role. Yeah. So it is it keeps people uh, sharp. Yeah. Uh, so when you are tapping them as well. So if you're a creative, if you're a copywriter or an art director, when you break in or if you're currently like it's always great to volunteer and, and help out. And it I helps us out a lot, too. Absolutely. The other benefit to new business specifically is as a young person or somebody who's a little bit more junior, you will immediately get exposure to the senior most people in your agency. Visibility, yes. It's Visibility. the best. It's the best. And you learn so much. I mean, there is not a faster learning track, I don't think, than working on a pitch. It's it's incredible. Yeah. I've yeah. seen I've seen creative teams in particular come to work on a pitch and before they know it, uh, even no matter what level they're at, their idea is picked and yeah. a CCO oh, yeah. sort of like plucks them out of the, and all of a sudden they're standing in that pitch room, pitching ideas yeah. and producing their work in three months. It's oh yeah. Incredible. It, it, yeah. It, the, the playing field is completely neutral for the most part. Yeah. I'm assuming as well for your agency, like the best idea wins. Like we're trying That's to right. win this business. We need the best idea possible. It can come from the janitor, which all love. Right. It could though. It could yeah. come from anybody. Account yeah. like for for some pitches. Like I'm sure. Like you might have a central pick. Regardless, the best idea will win. You definitely get some visibility. That's right. Love it. I want to know about your background and how you got all into all of this. So, understanding your journey to this yeah. amazing role, interesting role at Sachi and Sachi. Where did it all start? When did you say I want to do advertising? I want to advertise the advertising agencies for a living. Um. It, it feels like a very long time ago, but I will say I was actually dead set on being Katie Couric when I was young. I wanted to be an anchor. I wanted to be on the nightly news. That was where I was going when I went to Drake University and st studied broadcast news journalism until I got my first job offer in Ottumwa, Iowa to be an off-camera reporter for a salary that was below the poverty line level. You, you didn't like that? I was, I was not fresh That's about the dream it. though. You get to work it hard is, and work your way is. up. So here's what I realized. I thought to myself, I know three other people in my class that is, have just graduated, but that would jump at this job. I must not love this as much as I thought I did. And I was right. So I ended up going to uh, graduate school instead at BU. And I met a, uh, I met an advertising professor named Toby Berkowitz. And he totally lured me into advertising. He loved it so much. 
the passion he had for this industry, the way he talked about it, the way he ran his class. Um, suddenly I wanted to be in advertising. And so I finished my degree and he actually got connected me with someone at Mullen in Boston. Nice. And I got a job as an AAE. So, of, you know. so remind me, what was the, it was master's in television management. Yep. And that, but the, the instructor, your professor switched you over to advertising. He just pulled me on over. He told gotcha. me you have to be in advertising. I said, all right. And so, I don't think, and I want to clarify, and you tell me, do you, do you think you need a master's today to break into advertising or just so happen that you met the right person at the right time that helped like foster it? What's your take on a master's degree in this industry? Um, I don't, I don't think you do. I actually think the pendulum has swung again. And I think that while for me, that was the right path because I was intent on learning, getting sort of um, a business acumen behind my comms. Uh, education. I think that you can also come into this industry, which is very creatively driven uh, or a different path and be successful. But for now, I want to also tailor the question now. So if you, if somebody wants to be a CMO of an agency, mm -hmm. pretty high up, pretty big deal, a little bit more marketing, a little bit more business side, a little bit more numbers, maybe would you recommend an MBA or a master's then? I think uh, I think it is helpful to understand the the dynamics of, of business for sure. Mm -hmm. Do I think it's necessary? No. Okay. I think because by the time you're sort of in the place in your career where you're you are being considered for a chief yep. marketing officer position, you've had years of experience. Yep. And that I, I do believe that the, the business can be learned in that way as well. Okay. I know sometimes for some sweet C suite roles that they'll send people back to school, like, but that we don't really see that at a lot of agencies where they'll send, they might do some reimbursement, but yeah. we don't, I don't, I haven't, I haven't heard too much of agencies like sending their entry level people back to, back no. to for their masters. Usually, some, a lot of times they'll go to portfolio school if they have to get higher education, but yeah, not, not too common for the masters, but it, it definitely can help. I mean, if you can afford it and you have the time and, Sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I believe in education and yeah. I'm grateful for mine, for, for both my BA and my MS. But it's not uh, a requirement, you're saying? No, I don't believe so. Good to know. Yeah. I, I, I do know some people also that may have gone client side that could help, but I'm just trying to generalize or if they want to go to teaching later, mm -hmm. the master's can help. Sure. But definitely just wanted to get those different possibilities out where it might yeah. be useful. Yeah. Gotcha. So you broke into Mullen Lowe because of this professor. Mullen, yeah, I did. He was great. What was um, that role? That role was, I was an AAE working on Nextel, the telco, which is no longer in existence. Yeah. But at the time, it was Mullen's um, largest client, and it was, it was a great training ground. Amazing. Great training ground. Um, yeah. Is it usually do you see people in the 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 new business, the growth and marketing sector? Do you think they're usually account track first? Is that the normal like if they're transferring over, it's usually the account side? I think so. I mean, I I yes, I've seen a lot of um people in similar roles that I've worked with. And it just seems that the account side, the that skill set is most transferable mm -hmm. to sort of business development or growth and marketing. Project um, management maybe as well. You definitely need a good project manager on your you team. Do. I'm sure you do. Definitely do. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's sort of like you um, utilize so many skills from different areas of the business. You yeah. Know? I mean, you you in in this in my group, you can be doing anything from to your point, project managing to leading a client conversation to copywriting something. Um, like a letter to a client or something for a submission. So yep. it's there's a lot of different skills. I, I thought for a second, like the legal copywriting, like you got some lawyers. I'm sure you have some general counsel, but we but. do. We do have lawyers that we run things through. Yep. Yeah. This is not a law podcast. I mean, I know. So I can't do that. No. Okay. I love it, though. Um, other big things in your career, though. So when did, so I want to know now. So you yes. broke in the Mullen Low because of the master's degrees, because you're an amazing professor, got you the job. You got yourself the job. He didn't get you the job. You got yourself the job at Mullen Low. And then where did you go from account this new business world? Where, where were you at in your career? 
I think I was about 10 years in. I'm not wow. mistaken. Okay. Um, well, was that by intentional? Did you want to wait or did, were you, did you know right away you wanted to get into new business or you stumble your way into it 10 years later? What, what was it? I totally fell into it. I wanted to work at TBWA. I had, I had moved around a little bit and then I was uh, in New York and I wanted to work for TBWA. I had an introduction um, into the agency through a friend. And your friend, Rob? It was not Rob, but Rob, <laughs> Rob is great. Okay. Um, my friend, I, who was my boss at Mullen years previous, um, her name is Barbara Chandler. She's fantastic. And she brought me in. And the only opening they had at the time in any of the divisions in New York was um, a business development director for one of their worldwide um, divisions. Uh, it was... It, their digital division at the time. And so I interviewed for it because I just wanted to get into the agency and I was hired. And yeah. that's how I, I guess they thought my skills would transfer. And that's how I started working in business development. Absolutely. And what drew you to that agency? Just to the name, the people, the great work? I mean, Apple, Absolute, mm -hmm. PlayStation, Nissan, yeah. like all of their work was outstanding. Gotcha. And then you, you were there for quite some time uh, yep. and then you got promoted or and you went to a new agency I did I went to a few other agencies okay <laughs> um yeah I mean I I definitely one thing I did do in my career I will say because when I left TBWA besides one other little stop I went over to the media side because I felt like I didn't quite understand the like polls. I bought the new media but not really and you wanted to know media I did because as we were pitching, clients kept saying, well, how does this, how does this relate to, you know, my comms plan and how, how am I going to reach people in this way? Like, how does this messaging marry up? And, and, yeah. and, and how are you using data? This is the other thing. It was like the onslaught of the data wave. And I knew nothing about it. I, I, I was ill equipped. So I figured if I started, if I took a role on the media side that I could sort of get that under my belt and better understand the whole. That's picture. smart. It was How, great. And you, you, but you came back, right? I mean. I did. So I did that for a few years. Um, I also worked in a similar role to this one at a commerce agency, which it called Integer, which was a, mm -hmm. another learning curve, which I find so valuable every day. Um, really understanding like the point of sale marketing and what and how to convert a uh, transaction was just like again a whole other layer that I really didn't didn't quite understand it seems like you, you've been taking these leaps into different you've been venturing off in different areas of the business and it's really probably helped you become who you are today and, and just the confidence and the skill set behind your role it seems it's all culminated to this and it's like it, feel, it feels that way to me, and it really does. And you know, I'm grateful for all of that learning along the way because yeah. it has allowed me to have the confidence in what I'm doing today to to look at a CMO directly and say, "I totally get all of these things in your business, mm -hmm. and how Sachi plays a role in that, and how we can help uh, play our part to build your brand and drive your business." I love it, and we've already learned so many great lessons. But now I want to ask you, uh, from the student or person that's trying to break in wherever they're at, they could be in a different career. They could be doctors that want to switch in for all I care. How do you market yourself and to get hired, to get noticed by you? And you think, you know, what lessons can we take from your job to apply it to our own job search? It's a really great question. Um, I think that networking is one of the best ways to market yourself. And not being afraid to use any connection that you have. Um, if it's your siblings who work in an agency, have them introduce you. If it's your parents who know someone who works at an agency, use that connection. I mean, it is so much um, more likely to start a conversation from my side with, with an individual who's been recommended or sort of um, comes in through a, a known channel. If you don't have that, and a lot of us don't, I think that it's smart to do internships um, because then we get to know you immediately and what you bring to the table. So I would say, get yourself an internship somewhere 
because even if you don't end up at that agency, that internship alone will open up your network, you know, so you can um, try to figure something out. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do get every now and again, people reaching out to me on LinkedIn or, you know, like, um, people trying to break into the industry or, um, you know, perhaps they're in, but are looking to, you know, early on in their career, make a leap. And I will say it's, you know, I do read my, my messages and I think all of us do. It is really hard to sort oh, yeah. of continuously respond to all of that, but there is an ambition there that's recognized certainly, sure. you know, and once in a while, something will really catch catch my eye um i try to respond to all the students from bu or Drake. oh and, yeah i'm sure they're reaching out because they see that you're connected yeah through like the alma mater that yep. definitely is is there anything like you say catch your eye is there any like tricks that or like things people have done that have caught your eye other than hey i would love to talk um <laughs> anything that comes out of top of Form. mind for me, it's more of an intangible. It's sort of like there's an authenticity to some outreach that just is like you sort of feel like if you don't respond, it's yeah. Hard work. Like and all of it's like fun. I'm sure it's just the right timing for you as well. Like if you're yeah. if you're just like if you don't have as much going on and you feel good and you're caffeinated yeah. and you have like an hour to spare and somebody yeah. pops up right then, so it's uh, for me too. It's true. It's, it's true. like right right time they just catch you. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. But, you know, if you're listening and, and what people can do is like, they can reach out to me and I can send them to you. If, you know, I can do that screening for you. Yeah. Like, okay, why do you want to talk to Cole? Like, right. What's going on? Like, what did you like about the podcast? Did you listen to it? Yep. Yep. Tell me about, like, I could do a little bit of that for you. And then I can email you on the side. Like, all right, this is, this person's yep. legit. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. And then any other pieces of advice, I think, so we'll have people reach out to me or you order you directly. I don't know. I think I can, I, I'm happy to handle that as well. But is there any other advice that you want to get out to the world that you thought about coming on this show that you want people to know whether they're starting out or they're currently in their career or they're looking at uh, bringing into the marketing aspect of the business? What are you thinking? Um, I guess my only other advice would be uh, be authentic. Like be yourself, uh, try to stand out, but it has to be in a way that's genuine. Keep mm -hmm. creativity in mind. If you have interest in, um, in this industry, there's a lot of different types of agencies. I don't mean like discipline wise. I mean like cultures and like, yeah. like Saatchi will be different from TBWA, different from Wonderman Thompson. Like yeah. all sort of have like our uh, flavor. So really try to figure out best you can what your flavor is and then like uh, go after that in an authentic way. Yeah, prove that you align, you fit in and and you and why and, and tell them about the client work they've done and why it makes sense for you to work there. Yeah, it's it's so huge if you can just communicate like I'm a fit here. Like this is yeah. it. This is why like show them like with your portfolio, show them with your projects like this. We this is actually really similar to something you've right. already done. Like. Right. That alignment is, is really crucial because absolutely it's important. And I also just think like it's it's interesting sitting on this side watching um new talent come in. The the skill set and the knowledge they bring having simply been born when they were and grown up in a, a whole different uh world of technology than we have. I, I just always want to say to young people, just know your value. Like you have a ton to offer a ton and and so bring it forward because we need it we need the we need the talent well then that's that's amazing to hear and i need to hear that we all need to hear that so i appreciate it. <laughs> well amazing job nicole i really do appreciate you coming on telling your story we learned a lot from you know the master's degree to getting your first job to really the, the rfi rfp process and the new business we covered a lot so i feel really really good about this do you I do. This is really fun. It's sort of nice to just sit for a few minutes and it's like, like therapy. It's like a little bit like down memory lane. Like, yeah, it's good to not worry to shut everything else out. And I get, I know right. exactly what you're talking about. So true. And also, you really made me think about some people in my career that have impacted my I career in a positive way. I just love it. 
I wrote down Barbara Chandler. I'm going to reach out to her. She's amazing. She's at Deutsche New York. She's like one of the best industry agency account slash leaders you'll ever meet. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm glad you had fun. I think I know people get uh, some value out of it. So thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to this entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. If you like what you heard, it would mean a lot to us and help us grow and get better guests and better break-ins if you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave us five stars and a small review if you have the time. Be sure to connect with our guests if you like what they said by going to our Instagram at breaking and entering pod. That's all one word, breaking and entering pod on Instagram. We have links to their portfolios and their LinkedIn and they want to connect. So do that. And thank yous. Thank you to Mikey Malarkey, our audio engineer and Buchan Jung, our creative director. Can't do without you two and a team from the University of Illinois. It's a student team from the agency called AdBuzz, their PR agency, and it's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week with another amazing guest. Thank you for tuning in to Breaking and Entering. We want to be transparent with our valued listeners, so we'd like to disclose that this episode was made possible through a paid collaboration. The funds from this collaboration were used to produce this episode and contribute to the growth and enhancement of our show. At Breaking and Entering, we are committed to delivering high-quality content that informs, entertains, and engages our audience. We carefully select our partners to ensure that any sponsored or paid content aligns with the values and interests of our listeners. Rest assured that while this episode is a result of a paid collaboration, our opinions and creative control over the content remain independent and, of course, authentic. We prioritize providing valuable insights and experiences to our audience regardless of any paid partnerships. And we greatly appreciate the support of our sponsors and partners as they play a vital role in helping us bring content to your ears. If you have any questions about our partnerships or this disclosure, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Gino, G-E-N-O, at breakenterpod.com. Thank you.